Okay, thank you very much, and thank you uh, for the invitation, uh, which I was obviously very happy to accept. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit uh, just about the talk. Um, uh, I obviously have a, I'm immediately going to start with a confession of Catholic boy. Uh, I know very little, next to nothing, about Andy Warhol, except from having grown up with it, obviously. It's, it's obviously impossible to know nothing about Andy Warhol, <laughs> as much as it is impossible to know nothing about Lady Gaga. But I don't know a lot more about Lady Gaga than I know about Andy Warhol, so that is part of the context. The other part is uh, that indeed I'm a sociologist and that this is part of my uh, cultural sociology work and my studies on uh, fame and celebrity, which obviously has been a topic of somewhat discussion, so de definitely worthy of sociological reflection. And so there are three specific topics, actually, that I wanted to focus on today. Our first, both Andy Warhol and Lady Gaga address fame explicitly in their work. So I'm more going to talk about what do they have to say about fame, but what did they have to say about fame, and how does that differ, obviously. It, it must differ because they're from different uh, time periods, different generations. And uh, what I will also, and what I will end the talk with actually, is about some of the war hole that has appeared in the work of Lady Gaga. Because Lady Gaga has made explicit references to war hole and brought some Warholian dimension, if Warholian that exists, right? The word uh, into her work, Gagagian, not yet, right? <laughs> so when we talk about Andy Warhol and fame, obviously this is one of the reasons why he was famous famous is, of course, his famous reflection on 15 minutes of fame in various uh, formulations. You know, one day everybody will be famous, but only for 15 minutes, or in the future everybody will have their 15 minutes of fame. As you can see here, that has also been used, that terminology, by some of his uh, collaborators. On the one hand, the person, uh, ultraviolet, one of the Warholian uh, people, so to speak, the Warhol superstars, right, uh, who wrote a uh, biography. And then another work about Warhol, fame and misfortune. So that is on the one hand. Now, what I found very interesting was then this, what I found. This is a 2014 uh, news report. Andy Warhol's famous for 15 minutes quote may not have been his at all. So he may have appropriated it. So that obviously is in itself very uh, Warholian. Apparently, here you actually already see one of the big differences between, I'm going to say a little bit about celebrity culture then and now, one of the very big differences between then and now. Warhol, in part, was famous for constantly having a tape recorder with him and a camera. Uh, nowadays, I don't think you're going to be famous if you have a camera and a tape recorder with you all the time. Just a little uh, difference that you see there. Uh, apparently, the expression 15 minutes of fame came from a photographer. And it was first used, actually, in print in uh, the catalog, actually, to an exhibition in 1968, I think, in Sweden, where so somebody else wrote, you know, we're going to talk Warhol here, and in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. But apparently, it was a photographer who, he actually, he wanted to take some pictures of Warhol, and as he was doing that, other people wanted to come into the picture, and Warhol said, oh, look, everybody wants to be famous. And then, apparently, the photographer said, yeah, for 15 minutes. So, however, what is then very striking, I think, from what I know about Warhol, is then he started to use the expression. So it wasn't his expression, but he made it his expression. And there's several quotes that have been known to exist. The first one is probably the, the coolest because it's very confusing. I said every 15 minutes of fame, or someone, or every 15 people, or every in every. So it's like I probably said something like that. And then, you know, and or maybe this, maybe that, and something, variation. In the end, he just flat out said it. So is very interesting. It's like he made it authentic when it is not, you know, so it's like, and then he literally said it, so there's some recordings of that. Um, this has been, uh, this, uh, this um, notion of fame is itself, is in itself famous. And so when you Google Warhol, or you Google Warhol 15 minutes of fame, which is obviously the best way to learn of your culture today. One of the things that I found in this First of all, that indeed, whenever there's talk about Warhol, everybody's talk begins with 15 minutes of fame. I think I just did it too. So, right, so you can talk about authenticity here, but for me it's strategic, right? But then you have an NPR radio program about Warhol's 15 minutes of fame from, I think, 2008. And at some point, 
I didn't know um, that much about it, and I didn't really find more information. But apparently, at some point, MTV had a show called uh, Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes of Fame or something. Uh, Andy Warhol would probably have been part of it because he didn't die until 87, so you know, uh, MTV was flourishing in those days. However, what I find more striking is that you have a lot of derivations of the term or distortions. So what do you do is you kind of fool around with it. You play with the notion. You find some other words to fill in the blank. The, well, fame becomes the blank, and you fill in some other words. And then some of them rhyme, but not all of them. So one variation that I found is 15 minutes of pain. This actually was from Warhol himself. You see here? <coughs> So I think you recognize most of these people, right? Uh, I even recognize that uh, commentator because he was used in Family Guy. There's a there's a reporter in Family Guy that it looks like that commentator. It's like a, I noticed he looks really goofy, you know. I think like, and I think that's Hulk Hogan. Is that correct? And uh, Mr. T. And I think I'm not sure. Like, again, it, I had to do this very quickly. I think it's Cindy Lauper, the girl with the colored hair. And then it's obviously Warhol himself. Then I don't know if you know this guy. He's usually not blonde. Um, anybody? He usually has dark hair and he's a musician. Marilyn? Marilyn? Yeah, Marilyn Manson. So it's not Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> this is uh, Marilyn Manson. So there is a connection there. And he actually has a song called I Don't Like the Drugs, but the Drugs Like Me, in which he sings at some point, we're rehabbed and we're ready for our 15 minutes of shame. So that was Marilyn Manson in 1998. And then actually, this one actually, because uh, Matthew de Flem in 2015 said that in this day and age there is so much celebrity, so much publicity, and so much openness that maybe one day we're actually going to have 15 minutes of obscurity. <laughs> so I'm just, and I actually thought that I had written that uh, in, a, in an article that I wrote, but I talk about the issue, but actually I've never written it, and you have heard the first time I said it. <laughs> and, that, and I don't know if you noticed it, but I took a picture when I did it, so I'm gonna later put that on Twitter. So that's gonna become part of uh, my enduring fame. So as you can see, the last line is, I say, it's an enduring concept, 15 minutes of fame, but it's not an enduring reality, yeah, you know. It's, I'm obviously overstating it somewhat because, you know, there is still some obscurity. Good. So that's Warhol on fame. I'm going to say a few words on Warhol uh, uh, concept of pop, pop, pop art, pop art, pop art. But I'm assuming that a lot of you will know about that. And actually, I'm assuming that many of you will actually maybe know more about it than I do. However, this is going to be very interesting because uh, I'm later not just going to talk about what does Lady Gaga have to say about fame, but also what are some of the Warhol influences in the work of Lady Gaga, and that's what I need this for. So obviously, uh, pop art, it is, uh, you could say it is almost a contradiction in terms, right? What is pop? Something that is popular, so something that is related to a lot of people. Right? By definition, you need a lot of people to have pop, and it's usually understood although obviously it's a notion that a lot of people would like to debunk, that art is something up there. You know, like in, in, uh, in sociology, a famous uh, book about culture and art is called Distinction. You know, you make a I read the New York Times, you know, you just read, I don't know, some crap tabloid, right? mm -hmm. but I read the New York Times, so I'm up here. Or, you know, I go to the museum, I know who, um, Picasso is. Oh, I don't know just everybody knows who Picasso is. You know, I, I know about interpretations of his work. So art is up there. So art has a lead. Pop is popular. He wants to bring pop into art. So that is obviously uh, the key issue here. Uh, what are some of the goals in which he does it? This is very interesting. Basically, it's about, let's say, debunking hierarchies, right? So what I just said, distinction, he wants to squash that distinction. Bring the popular into the museum. So this, these are again some eternal truths that I found online because this is from the Wikipedia entry of uh, Andy Warhol. So it's the systematic invalidation of the hierarchies of representational functions and techniques. So basically, what that means is it's kind of like anything goes, anything goes, or you 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 don't have to you know you don't have to be. Totally 
taught at a university for it to be art and so on and so forth. Hierarchy of subjects worthy to be represented will someday be abolished. So it's everybody can be represented. And then indeed, he fights the notion of what is original. You know, like is the soup can, the way it is represented original or not. What are some of the means, and this is again then related uh, to what I had to say about fame, what are the, some of the means through which he does this? And I, this is actually uh, uh, the subtitle of the exhibition, right? Is uh, Warhol's famous faces. So what does he do? He purposely relies on famous people, uh, famous faces, uh, anything of, that has to do with fame and celebrity, and then uses that. So it's kind of the notion, if you rely on something famous, then whatever you do with it will carry on some of that fame, will transfer some of that fame on. So he made art from stars, and then the notion in terms of, it's maybe more related to the goals, is to reveal and conceal identity. So like, it's like is that, that a picture of Marilyn Monroe? It, it isn't. Cause you know, she doesn't have yellow hair, or she didn't. Sorry, she didn't have yellow hair. She she didn't have a purple skin, or whatever it is, right? Is it really Warhol? Is it really Michael Jackson? So, and you somehow give it a different representation. What are some of the consequences? Um, it's both, or it used to be both. I think it more used to be both. Uh, so to some extent, Warhol had a lot of critics. Uh, I don't know, today, maybe less than he, he did, maybe when... I assume that when he just got around, there were a lot of critics. You know, like, what the hell are you doing? I can't, how dare you invade, you know, the museum with your pop, right? That kind of... Thing. Nowadays, probably very different. But, you know, why do I find it interesting? Because, let's say, the last couple of things that I said about hierarchy, trying to squash hierarchy, what are some of the implications? If instead of Warhol, I would have said Gaga, it would have been the same, you know? Like Lady Gaga tries to make art from her pop music, does jazz, and so, you know, and so on. It's like, it's that kind of thing. What do some people think of her? You know, she's just a stupid pop star, like there's a million, and I know it's really artistic. So uh, Warhol struggled with that issue too. Right? So some people say, no, it's nonsense, he's vilified, it's a self-promotion thing. He just relies on promotional devices. On the other hand, of course, it is art. Uh, sociologically speaking, art is which whatever is considered art in a society, in a culture, you know. So one of the consecration moments of the visual arts is very actually uh, very special, very uh, specific to the visual arts is they have their own museums. So, you know, sociologically, if it's in the museum, it's art. I don't, you know, I don't make the judgment. It's a social, cultural context in which it is made. And in that sense, of course, he is very successful. To wit, look here, this is also a recent art of 2012. Andy Warhol's legacy lives on. So you see, they use 15 minutes of fame, question mark. No, not at all. You know, so they say decades and decades of fame. So his legacy is lasting. We talk about him now. He's been dead for almost uh, 30 years. And then indeed, I Googled it. I Googled some combination of Warhol, Columbia Museum, something like that, to see, and indeed, you see pictures of the museum uh, exhibit, right? These, I think these paintings are exhibited here right now, right? And you see pictures of Warhol, and if you look very carefully, you see a picture of me. <laughs> That's me, with the, the, the guy with the gray hair and the red tie. So I thought, well, this is what our culture is today, right? And so obviously this may probably have something to do with the fact that I was teaching this class, uh, which I assume many of you will have heard of. But so this is the background to my next part about Lady Gaga and fame and the Warholian influences. So uh, if you haven't heard, I don't know where you were living, on another planet. Uh, no, just kidding. In the fall of 2010, it was announced that I was teaching, a, going to teach a class called Lady Gaga and the Sociology of the Fame. And uh, so there's three key terms in there, sociology, fame, and Lady Gaga, but everybody focused on the Lady Gaga part. You know, the sociology and fame part was kind of like, okay. It was the most popular news story about Lady Gaga. And I beat out news stories about Lady Gaga costumes at Halloween, so that was pretty, uh, got on television. 
I became part of my own subject matter. And if you're interested in that, actually, I wrote a paper about it that is online. It's called Professor Goes Gaga. So if you, <laughs> if you Google that, then you can read about everything that happened to me. It's a confessional piece. And, and then when I wrote about it, I got more newspapers contacting me to talk about my fame on the fame about the fame, right? <laughs> see? So that, that, and that's you see here, actually. That, that was also in the Guardian that got picked up in uh, Pakistan. And then it also got uh, the Gaga Sensei one was in the state, welcome to newspaper. So you can read about that. Good. What do I have to say about Lady Gaga and fame? So actually now you're going to see a lot of parallels immediately, but you're also going to see the differences. So like Warhol, uh, Lady Gaga talks about fame in her work very explicitly, brings it in very explicitly. So obviously, uh, Lady Gaga has talked a lot about fame uh, in the course of her work, explicitly with the albums that she, we see that Lady Gaga draws a distinction between fame and what she calls the fame. Uh, fame is pretty much the same as celebrity, so that refers to wealth, to power, and so on, whereas the fame is what she embraces and what she says is a shareable fame. Of course, in the course of her career, Lady Gaga also became more exposed to fame, which she addressed in the fame monster and obviously at the VMA performance. Negative implications of her fame came about specifically a couple of years ago when there were several negative media reports concerned about whether her fame has ended. Over the past year, however, there's clearly been a recovery with the Tony Bennett Cheek to Cheek tour, the Oscar performance, and so on. So where the future is going to be, that is still an open question. If we look at the influence specifically of Warhol and Gaga, then first of all we see that in terms of the organization of her work, she uh, emulated the House of Gaga on uh, Warhol's factory. So the House of Gaga refers to the creative team of Lady Gaga, mostly focused on the video, visual style, choreography, also including personal assistance and management. In terms of the aesthetic, uh, Gaga has made explicit references to Warhol as a model, as an inspiration, you know, somebody who made commercial pop uh, successful as art. You also see it in the early presentations of her work and uh, the video interludes, the early video interludes were very Warholian, the uh, Who Shot Candy Warhol, so you can look those up on YouTube. Later in her career, there have still been Warhol influences, such as when she did the presentation of the Fame Fragrance at the Guggenheim, and she was sleeping there. So, you know, very stylistic, very uh, weird in a way, eccentric and uh, absurd, one could say, and obviously, uh, others, fans of hers, have made Warhol references, specifically by making Warholian influence art, but she herself has also explicitly referred to Warhol. Uh, probably the most uh, striking example in that respect is her most recent uh, work, Art Pop, where she obviously reverses from Warhol's pop art to her art pop, bringing art back into pop, just the way it was in a way uh, when Warhol, uh, when Warhol's art was on the soup can. She also did some art in connection to art pop that was very reminis reminiscent of the reverse of Warhol by bringing uh, art into pop, uh, uh, treating her face as a canvas. Uh, which you see here, and then obviously uh, hiring Jeff Koons to do the album cover for Art Pop and having Robert Wilson uh, make certain artworks uh, popular by uh, means of putting Gaga's face on it and then putting it in the Louvre. Obviously, where the fame of Lady Gaga is going to go is still a bit of an open question, when it, whether it's going to be as enduring as a Warhol's, which clearly, you know, is still here with us, remains an open question. Uh, those of you who are interested in more of my work on Lady Gaga and fame, you're welcome to visit my website. Just Google my name and then you'll find it and then you can read several of my articles. Thank you. <laughs>